Hey everybody, Coach Jason, Arm Pitching Development. Today is Youth Baseball Pitching Simplified. So we're going to go mechanics, make it easy for 9, 10, 11, 12 year olds, and not try to overtrain this as you would a professional. You want to keep things as easy as possible when training these ages because they don't have the strength and stability and quite often the mobility of their joints. When we're breaking this down, I want you guys to think of it in three points. When we go back to my uh, core points of balance, direction, and timing. Balance has to do with not just static load and not just uh, balance through the, the finish line. It has to do with moving pieces as well, more of a dynamic sense. Direction has to do with the course of the pitch and the course that the actions of your body is taking as you're doing the delivery of your pitch. The timing has to do with when, when is everything syncing up in the right moment, at the right time, in rhythm, for everything to match and meet where you want that pitch to go. If you can master those three points, balance, direction, and timing, I feel like you will have a good, solid foundation to be an excellent pitcher going forward. So, from balance, direction, and timing, we're gonna take it into uh, six core points, okay? You have your load point, or your leg lift, right? When you go through your leg lift, what I look for is a pretty good straight line here on my backside keeping good posture through my shoulders. I'm not leaning forward too heavy, and I'm certainly not leaning back. You'll see that quite often uh, when you are working with youth guys or developing younger players. So work on your posture. From the leg lift, it does not have to be at a 90 degree angle. Here, a little bit in is okay, a little bit out is okay, as long as they're keeping their chin over their abdominals and keeping a good posture in their presentation uh, from their load point. From your load point, you'll have low balance break. On your low balance break, you're coming straight down with the front leg and you're working the timing of the break of the hands and the lowering of the front leg. So load point, low balance, break the hands. It's not a separation of the hands, it's just a break of the hands that will come later. Now, going into point three off of your low balance and break point, you're gonna go into your stride and separation phase. This is to do with the direction of the pitch. So we're going into stride length, and we're going into separation from the hips, external hip, and external hip here into separation uh, going into our, our throwing phase or our, our delivery phase here. Load, low balance break, stride and separation. We can dive into the loading of the back leg, your glutes and your um, quads, but for right now, I want the young athletes to feel comfortable in the delivery of the pitch. So I'm not gonna ask them to put too much applied pressure here until they really understand how to keep the course of the pitch going on the right plane. So now that we're off of stride and separation, here, a uh, couple of things to note. On my glove side, I like to think of it as I'm lifting the catcher up with my thumb staying inside. When I'm breaking, I'm staying on top of the ball, elevating up my elbows. Okay, I don't necessarily care about where your forearms or placement is, but I, I like to keep it right around about a 120 on my break uh, from my, my separation. Um, I probably have a little bit of a circle coming back up into arm spiral, um, but the, you'll, you'll see that and figure that out. Again, we're training younger athletes here. So off of stride and separation, we're gonna work to transition the hips forward. That's bringing this back foot into rotation, into pivot, and squaring up the target 
with your right hip and your left hip and your chest line from the rotation. The timing of the arm should match the shoulders. You do want the hip to lead the, uh, the hands through, to lead the shoulders through here. When I'm going off my glove side here, what I try to do is stack this pretty squared up to keep me from bowing off here or dropping into my left hip a little heavy. So I'm gonna keep square with my target just a little bit longer, a little bit better here on the presentation of my pitch. So once you get through the transition phase, one more thing on that. My back leg, you'll notice I'm probably at like 180 degrees here. It doesn't have to be that much when you're training a youth guy. What we want to do on the back side is try to train the discipline of holding the rubber as long as possible through the release of the pitch. So once you get here, release of the pitch, then we're going to go through throw to finish phase. When I'm training a younger athlete, I will have them hold their finish phase because it seems to be a very awkward point for young men to throw the pitch or throw a ball. Oftentimes everything's really rounded and goes off to the left side. We wanna stay square, we wanna know where the ball's going and throw strikes at younger ages. So off of the throw finish, okay, we're stacked. Then it goes into your follow through. For young men with a little bit weaker hips, uh, not as strong as high school players or college players, simply bringing the back hip through will be enough. We don't have to get through it any further than that. So load, low balance break, stride and separation, transition, throw and finish, and then your follow through. It doesn't have to be more than that. There is specific training points when you're going into building a young athlete like this. I always start from the end point. So if I'm training a new athlete, I'm gonna have them work the finish phase first. So usually we'll come with a squared position here, working arm action, just like jog here, and bringing the catcher up maybe 10 feet away and just have him work, throw the ball through. I'm not working how hard am I blocking on my front leg or how extended am I getting. I'm simply feeling this release point out over and over again until they feel comfortable being square with their target. On the stride and separation phase, we'll oftentimes do a build up or a toe taps here to find rhythm and then work into finish phase. After that, we'll build up the load point into low balance break. So we got load, break, load, break, and then work out from that point. Those three drills right there, building a nine, 10, 12 year old, it's gonna be perfect. If you'll do them daily, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's not gonna be an overkill of reps. So I hope you enjoyed the video of Youth Baseball Pitching Mechanics Simplified for you guys. For more pitching tips, drills, exercises, and workouts, please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button. Until I shoot the next video, I'll see you next time.